range-based for loops are basically available since C++ version 11. And it's basically a, a specialized version of a for loop. And it's a for loop that is that iterates once for each element in an array. So it's a for loop that's meant to be used with arrays. Let's just look at an example of how it would be used. Let's say we have an array, an array of integers. The name of the array is numbers. And I'm going to initialize it to some values. So basically, I'm giving the array some initialization values instead of providing the size. So it will be getting the size from the number of values that I have in the initialization list. I have five values, so that means that this is going to be a five element array. So what I can do with the range based loop is for, and I'll just write the code and then I'll explain it in val, name of the array is numbers. And let's say what we want to do is display the values that are in this array. And line. All right, so what we're doing here, this is our range-based for loop. And what this is doing, this value right here, this variable, is called the is called the range variable. And basically what's going to happen with this is we so we declare a range variable that's the same data type as the as our array, and then we give this range base for loop, the name of the array, so the name of the array is numbers, and what it's going to do is, so the first time this loop runs, it's going to access this array, and it's going to be at the first element. The first element has 10 stored to it, so what it's going to do is copy that 10 to the range vari variable val. So now val is equal to 10, so then when we get to the C out statement, this is going to print out 10 to the screen. So let's just go over here and put specify what the program output is. So the first, it's going to output 10 first. Then this is a for loop, so it's going to go to the next value. So it's stepping through this array. Now it's going to get to the second element. The second element has 20 stored in it, so now it's going to copy 20 to val. Now val is equal to 20, and so then when it gets the C out statement, it's going to print out 20 to the screen. And it's going to do that until it reaches the end of the array. So it's going to print out each of these values that we have stored in the array. So basically what this range-based for loop is doing is it's stepping through the array. So we just give it the name of the array. We declare a, a variable called the range variable. And each element in the array is copied to the range variable as the loop steps through the array. So this is kind of nice because we don't need a counter variable. So this, this range-based for loop automatically knows the number of elements that are in the array. So we don't need a counter variable. So don't need a counter variable. And we also don't need to worry about going off the bounds of the array. This is probably the big one. So remember in C++, I'll just finish writing this, so don't need to worry about going off the array. So if you remember in C++, if you, it, it can be pretty easy to accidentally go off your array. So for instance, if we were accessing this array with the five elements with a regular for loop, let's say we have four, so this is just going to be a regular for loop, so int i is equal to zero, int, oops, i less than or equal to five, i plus plus. So what this is going to do is this is going to accidentally go off the end of the array. So if we have 
our array. So we have 0, so these are our elements, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we have five elements, remember the numbering starts at 0, and the highest element is n minus 1, n being the number of elements. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, oops, 40, 50 stored in this array. If we look at this loop, we have i is equal to 0, so that's good. That's going to access the first element. Go through the loop, i is equal to 1. Now it's at the second element. Second time, or third time through, i is equal to 2. Fourth time through, i is equal to 3. Fifth time through, i is equal to 4. Well, if we accidentally do this less than or equal to, now we have i is equal to 5, and so we're accessing this, this memory location right here that doesn't exist in the array. So that can cause problems. So the, the nice thing about the range-based for loop is we don't need to worry about going off the array because the the loop automatically knows the size of the array and it won't go off the bounds of your array. So these are the two nice things about the range-based loop. The other nice thing is it's a lot more concise way to write code. Like this is easier to read and interpret than this. But there's some issues with it. So first of all, so first of all, if we don't have the we don't have the index of the array as it iterates through. So if we look at this range-based for loop right here, we don't know what the what index it's at as it's iterating through. So with the regular for loop, we know the index because that's just what i is equal to. But we don't get the index for this range-based loop. And there are a lot of cases where you might want the to know the index of where you are in your array. Um, you could always put a counter in here. So you could have a count plus plus in your range-based loop, but that takes away some of the conciseness of writing the code with the range-based loop to start with. But that is an option. The other problem with the range-based for loop is there isn't an easy way to iterate backwards. So if you want to iterate through your array backwards, you can't really do that easily with a range-based for loop. You can do that pretty easily with a regular for loop. So if we had for, and then this is int i is equal to four, i greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. So this loop is going to iterate backwards through our array from the fourth element to the zero element. So if you need to iterate backwards, or if you need your counter or your index, it might be better to use a regular for loop. But if you don't need to worry about either of those things, the range-based loop is a pretty good option. OK, so one other issue with the range-based loop that has an easy fix, but one other issue is the range-based loop is only, so this variable here, the range variable, is only obtaining a copy of what's stored in the element in the array. So since this is just getting a copy, it can't actually edit the contents of the array. So we could get the copy, and what we're doing in this statement is we're printing out the values in the array. So since we're just printing out the values, we're not actually editing anything, so we don't need to edit the values in this array. But what if we wanted to edit the values in the array? Like what if we were reading in values and storing them to the array, or we wanted to do some math and change the contents of the array? So we can still do that with a range-based loop, but we need to use a reference variable. So let's, let's I'm going to rewrite this. So let's say that we've declared an array. So this is an array of integers with five elements, and we want to read in values and store them to the array. And we want to use a range-based for loop. So we're going to use a reference variable, and this, this is an ampersand. So um, int and val. So now we have a reference variable for our for our range variable, and then we give it the name 
of the array again. So now what we can do is, well, first of all, if we're getting information from the user, we want to do a C out. So enter number. And then we can do a C in. And we're just going to do C in val. And since, and let's draw our array. So our array has five elements. Since this is a reference variable, this is really an alias to the actual element that's in the array. So when this gets, so if we go back up here, remember this value is, if without the reference variable, this is just obtaining a copy of whatever is stored in the array element. But down here, since we're using a reference variable, this is actually getting the address of this array element, and so it's, it has access to change the array. So if we read in and store something to val, it's going to store that to wherever location you are in the array. So the first time this runs through, let's say the user enters a 10, this is actually going to store a 10 to the array. Second time through, now it's referencing this element. If the user enters, say, a 20, it's going to store a 20 to this element in the array. Third time through, now it's referencing this element. If the user enters a 30, now it's going to store 30 to this element in the array, and so on. So basically, we can use the range-based for loop with reference variables to change values in the arrays. If you don't need to change the values, you don't want to use a reference variable, but if you need to change the values, you're going to need to use a reference variable.